But they don't have to fuck to get their mana back. No. no. <laughs> and uh, which, is, <laughs> which is a downside. Let's be, let's be frank. That, that loses no, the man. point for me, yeah. yeah that's it's kind of the best part of Fate. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> You gotta, you gotta read the doujins and visual novels for that. You gotta read the, the doujins, <laughs> dude. Awesome. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Anime Summit Podcast. It's your favorite hosts with the most, your favorite bitches, the ultimate duo, Sam the Bomb. And with me today is Nick... I'm speed running fall season. Speed running fall. <laughs> I watched like half of these at like 1.75 speed. Anime done quick. ADQ. Uh, freaking Danny's not here because she's dealing with some life stuff. So she's taking like, a week off. But it's just me and Nick, and we're going to review the fall season. Better late than never, huh? After the holidays, caught up on some stuff. Well, not everything because of the holidays, I'll say. And. Honestly, there was kind of a lot of things I wanted to watch this season, and I just didn't get to all of it. Um, yeah, we still got time because we have the summies coming up. In we have the summies coming up. We have the summies tentatively coming up. in February. Tentatively in February. But uh, yeah, dude, fall season. I, you know what, dude? There was, I was actually because like in the beginning, we did we did two first impressions for this because I was like, man, there's a bunch of stuff I wanted to watch. And Wait, did we do two or one? Or was that summer that we only did one? Well, lately, for like the past, I don't know, most of 2020 and, and like half of 2019, we we were only doing one. And then this last one for fall, we did two first impressions. No, I think we've always been doing part one and part two because we did eight and eight. And then oh, one no, season well, there, there we switched a, it to only one. There was a couple times. Oh, no, you. I think you're right. Because of the pandemic in 2020... It was like the middle of 2020, like the summertime. We were just doing one, yeah. Yeah, cause I think it was summer. There was like just not that much stuff. It's like spring and summer. We just did. There was literally like 20 shows that came out, and some of them weren't even really shows. Yeah, and then I think th- that's probably another reason why we got like maybe overwhelmed this season because... um, Our blades were dull. <laughs> yeah. Fucking let's do it, shall we? Um, But first... Let's take a small break right here, and me and Nick, the ultimate duo, will be right back. Hey everybody, it's Tom from Anime Summit here, and I'm here to talk to you about matcha tea from tpaz.com. This matcha is uh, harvested from Uji, Japan, and is certified organic matcha. It's a healthy and organic stress reliever, cognitive boost, it's full of antioxidants, and full of natural caffeine to wake you up in the morning. Go to tpaz.com. And use anime at the checkout to get 20% off. Or you can go to um, matcha.animesummit.net and it'll auto apply the coupon for you. Matcha tea at tpaz.com. Boom shakalaka. Check that out. Links.animesummit.net. All the links are right there for you. Patreon.com slash anime summit. Become a patron today. Give a puffy his puff. Booyah. You get exclusive content, um, exclusive podcasts, exclusive vlogs. Any extra content that I can give you, that we can give you, we will give you. So become a patron today. <clears throat> and first grabs that merch that we are rolling out, hopefully um, by the middle of this year or fall of this year. And uh, also, this was totally last minute, but I guessed it on the AAA podcast. It was <laughs> it was super last minute. And I was just like... Okay, and then like it was Mitski who like messaged me, and he was like, "Well, we're not we're not totally sure because I think someone might sit out, and if they do, can you guess?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, just let me I know." I can't believe you got on before I did. <laughs> <laughs> I like listening better anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I well, and as they said, they said the next time. Uh that they have one of us on. It's like, I'll send Nick over there because, you know, he listens to you more than I do and, and whatever. But I'll be the I'll be the deep, deep right field, the fourth string backup. And, uh, yeah, it was really fun. We talked about Akudama Drive, so I, like, fucking ran train on that show because I was only four reps in. And that's probably a better way to do it because then it's more fresh in your mind anyway. Yeah, because they, they, had, they had watched it as it was finishing, and I was – I, like, ran train on it, like – the day of 
<laughs> but like it was really fun so i really appreciate that and then they are we're doing more collabs with them this year so like one of them is going to come over here yeah i was going to say we should have one on here shoot yeah we're there we're, we're talking with them right now and they're one of them is going to come over planning here. on the podcast planning on the podcast so that was really fun so i just had to mention that real quick and uh yeah dude that was super fun so the, it should be out right the audio version of it should be out right now for those of you who came to the live stream version of it on sunday thank you very much i really appreciate that and uh yeah dude check it yeah they, they got a great uh anime podcast i think if you're just looking at anime podcasts, they have like the highest like production value, you know, with sound because they have like little segments. They got sound bites for everything. It's very like it's very it's a very tight ship, and I like that. But every podcast has its has its strengths, so you know we we have uh we have our strengths. So there you go. Yeah, dude. I I, I have been listening to them a bit more lately, especially during quarantine. I was definitely getting into more anime podcasts. And I was like, you know, I gotta listen to AAA because fucking A. They release the same day as we do too. <laughs> yeah. So like, unless you're they, if you're a patron, they release a little early. But anyway. Yeah. So they, they should be out for is as you're listening to this right now, that should be out as well. So hell yeah. So let's dive into the listener question of the week, shall we? You get. To <laughs> this is a great question, by the <laughs> this way. This is fucking funny. Yeah. This is from Jeremy Thunderstrikes. You get to make a live action anime adaptation, but Samuel Jackson. Has to be in the lead role. Which one do you choose and why? <laughs> Dude, this is great. Right. We're gonna do one funny one and one serious one. So I thought for I thought for a funny one that he could be Gendo. Oh, uh, that's a, that's my serious one. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like get in the get in the robot, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, do okay. Anything he does is gonna be kind of funny because like yeah. I mean, he's not he's not funny, but like he's he's just like such a great action. Like uh, character, he just know? does everything motherfuckerly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's like, oh no, the angels are attacking. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> oh man. And I don't know for a serious one, Shinji. I didn't ask you a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> wait, he was he wait he was in the live action adaptation of Kite. Oh shit, was <laughs> yeah he? the American the American one yeah the American adaptation nice. of Kite. Um, he was like one of the agent guys, head agent guys or something. But like for a serious one though, dude, he could probably. I kind of would have loved to see him in Ghost in the Shell. That would have been sick if he was. You fucking Ghost taking my show. shit, goddamn! All right. Oh, is that okay. what you said? Sorry, These are too, both sorry. Our answers. My bad. Right. <laughs> or or I'll pick you know, other shit. That's fine. Like <laughs> it's funny. Samuel too, Jackson you- is Araragi. Can he save <laughs> Sendragahara? <laughs> it was funny because Jeremy was like, and don't say Afro Samurai because he was the voice of Afro yeah, Samurai. Yeah, that, you can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that, no. But, like, I was also thinking, like, Nick earlier was saying, like, You can't oh, really like, do a high school character unless you, like, totally change the whole story. You'd have to readapt it. Could do uh, Jet from Cowboy Bebop, but somebody else is already doing that, obviously, for the Netflix. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I think there's, like, better fits for Jet anyway. Because Jet is, like, this really burly dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because Samuel you can't Jackson's go wrong with Samuel Jackson. It's like never Samuel wrong. Jackson's like tall, like a like big in a tall way, but not like yeah. burly, you know. So still intimidating though. But yeah, dude, that's a funny question. Do you got any other ones or no? Uh, he oh yeah, he could be the Count of Monte Cristo. That'd be sick. That'd be dope. Because like the, the way they did the anime version of it is like takes place in space. They like totally readapted the whole thing. <laughs> so it's like, fuck it, readapt it again. Make him uh, Samuel Jackson. He's a great yeah, actor. Dude. He could probably be like half of the JoJo characters if he really wanted. But yeah, he's not like young enough to be a JoJo character. They're all really young. He could be like an old an old character, like old Joseph Joe Star maybe. Yeah, that might work. That might work. Shit. Uh, let's move on to Waifu and his bando. Waifu of the week is Riri from Lily Bouquet. Um, Assault Lily Bouquet because Thick Riri, Dives. a.k.a. Lily. Save lives. Dude, thick the dies, thigh squish in this show is Thigh assault in the anime. Uh, hip assault. Hip thigh assault the anime. And his bando is, from, is Moriarty, of course, from Moriarty the Patriot because he's a G and he's a badass. Um... Yeah, dude, those are both from shows that we will be talking about today for the fall review. Let us know what you guys watched. Um, in the meantime, 
you can hear what we watched, and we're just going to go down the list. So, uh, Nick, how do you want to do this? Because there's all sequels at the top. Let's just for the yeah. First let's one. just uh, let's do what we did at the beginning, where we we start at the top of the Mal chart for popularity. Mm-hmm. Just go down and say what we watched and what we dropped. So there's Jujutsu Kaisen at the top, but I think we can. This one is 24 episodes, so only half of it is finished by the time we're recording right now. Yeah, I think by the time this comes out, like by the time you're listening to this, then the new the new episode of the second core is already out. Um, so we can talk about that when we do our like straggler app that we plan on doing. Yeah, like this is kind of one that I I like to review it at the end, you know, where it's like you talk about it at the end because uh, Otaku Spirit does that too. They don't they don't do like the halfway mark for shows it makes sense to me it's like why would we we well we kind of did it with great pretender but that was different because on netflix they released the first like half of it netflix jail yeah so i guess if it's like a netflix thing where it's like this is what's on netflix now Mm -hmm. like baki or whatever then you could do that but i mean if you want to talk about if you're caught up you might as well you might as well yell about it i (laughs) well i mean i just think it's great studio mappa like and so like the, the it ended right before like the holidays right or the first core ended right before the holidays, and you know it ended with the at a at a great spot which is where Yuji fights. Also spoilers and light spoilers throughout this episode. Okay guys, um it ended where Yuji fights Mahito, which is like a cursed yeah, spirit. Don't don't give like any heavy spoilers. Just to, no no no. But um it ended yeah. at a good spot. Um and it was really cool. They animated it ex- like really well. And for those who are not, like, caught up on the manga or whatever, I mean, if you want to go read the manga, go ahead. But the the TV show is just so great. I mean, it's animated super sick. Every panel that I wanted to see animated a certain way was animated that way. Really cool. Very, like, and the power system is, is really cool. I've always loved the power system in Jujutsu Kaisen. It's probably one of the best things coming out of Jump right now, and I think everybody should watch it. At least give it like the, you know, whatever. There's so whatever much fan re- art on our Discord right now with the masked guy. What's his name? Gojo. Gojo. Daddy. Anybody? This is the thing with 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 women. If you're a guy, just just fucking wear a helmet or something, and like you're automatically like two points hotter. <laughs> like our faces okay we have brutish disgusting features so the more you cover the better <laughs> that's not true shut up <laughs> you're like you're like oh that's half true <laughs> <laughs> fuck off anyway um no it's really cool it's it's a really great shonen and i i think uh it's it's the the reason why it's doing so good i think is because it stands out from you know your typical kind of shonen things so like that and chainsaw man i think are are doing really well in that front. So definitely check out Jujutsu Kaisen. So hyped for Chainsaw Man. We'll definitely be talking about it more later on for sure. Oh, yeah, me too. Studio Mappa also. So so does, does the animation uh, hold up after the first few episodes? Is it oh, yeah. still pretty good? Oh, yeah. Nice. Because, yeah, Every, Mappa's, Mappa's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. The, especially even the little, the little conflicts that happen in the middle of the show and in between, like, the, the last fight on the 13th episode or 12th episode, just really cool. Like the, like Gojo fighting volcano man, volcano head guy, which I always forget his fucking name, but it's a, uh, um, it's volcano head Johnson. Volcano head now. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Um, but yeah, animation is really good. Really like the opening theme also. And the ending, it's got one of the best EDs ever. Ooh, I there's some stiff competition there in this season. Stiff competition. I'll be the judge of that. Um, but yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen, check it, check it, check, 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 check. Anyway, moving on. Uh, then we have. So there's a bunch of sequels and stuff. I know Danny was watching Haikyuu. Um, which she did a she did an AOQ up with with shocking. Shocking. Yep. So check that out if you guys like that. I mean, this look, it's Haikyuu second season to the top second season to the top. So there's like a so there's regular Haikyuu, then there's Haikyuu to the top. So this is like. Yeah, to the top the signifies that hike to the top signifies that it's like the fifth like season. Okay, and there's a bunch the of to the top second season is the second part of it or whatever. I think um, I'm, I might be wrong on that. But yeah. Yeah, and yeah, again, if you like Haikyuu, watch it. It's great. It's one of the better sports shows. Not that I would know. 
I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Danny is yelling right now. She's yelling at you. Uh, after that, we have Don Machi. Is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Season three. This is another one of the stragglers seek slash sequels that we will. I think we'll probably try to cover it, and like maybe not all of us will watch it, but like I'll try to catch up to it. Give give our take on it later on. Um, but it's, this is like a season three, so. If you like Don Machi 1 and 2, check this one out. I actually still have to watch 2, <laughs> so maybe I won't get that far, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll review it a little bit later on, too. But, yeah, I mean, this is kind of a funny... You got you got uh, Hestia with the uh, the boob ribbon back in the day. I really need to watch Everybody this show. Everybody cosplayed as her. Yeah, then they were selling, like, ribbons for, like, 30 bucks. I mean, it's kind of a generic fantasy show. I don't know if it's isekai. I think it's just fantasy, straight up. Um Adventure fantasy, fantasy adventure, yeah. And Bell is like this overpowered character with like this super special ability that lets him. I forgot exactly what it does. He like he can like level up super fast or something or KO in one hit. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty fun show. It's like a, it's it's a little bit above average, I would say. So uh, yeah, I I definitely got to catch up to that. And uh, what's her name? I Eis, Eisen, the girl with the half boob plate. Best girl right there. Super hot. Yeah, boo played best girl. <laughs> Ice oh, Wallenstein. Man. There we go. That sounds like a Legend of the Galactic Heroes character. With like a nameplate over her face. All right. Ice Wallenstein. Uh, now uh, we finally we have... get to one where this is a new show that started in fall. Tony Kaku Kawaii over the moon over the moon for you. And I didn't finish. I really want to finish though, so I God didn't say damn it, too much. Um, Yeah, I fucked up. This was a Studio Seven Arcs based on a manga. It is basically about like this newlywed couple that, and they're both like eighteen, I think. Um, yeah. And the girl saves the guy's life after he gets hit by <laughs> he like almost gets isekai. Basically, he gets hit by a bus. <laughs> Pretty much. And basically, he's like he's kind of like a like a he's kind of like a puppy where he's like super positive about everything. Um, but like, I, it kind of works for him. I think, did you just get to the first few episodes on this one or how far did you get? I got to episode eight. Oh, that's, that's pretty close. Yeah. So I, I um, don't want to know what happens at the end. I want to finish it. Yeah. I it's really kind of hard like to, spo- it. it's not like nothing super spoilery happens. Like it's, you know, it's not like key where everybody fucking dies at the end or whatever, but <laughs> it's not a June Maeda thing, but it's, uh, right. It's it, it it's just a pretty it's a good solid romance. Like it has a seven point nine nine on Mal, which is which is pretty good. That's above average. Um I think I ended up giving it like a six, which is I could change that later on. I, I think it I think it was very solid. It was fun to watch, it was easy to watch. The uh the characters are both like very nice. It kinda reminds me of uh Aura Monogatri, my love story. Um I think it's not quite as good as that one. And it's also not quite as good as I can't understand what my husband is saying. Those are kind of compar- comparative shows, um, but it's 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 like it's very wholesome and, and like easy. It's like the romance is good. The it has some light comedy, nothing too too much of a belly laugh. But um, you know, the they're both they're both like learning day by day. Like each episode, they're like learning about each other and like you know what to do in a married life. And you know, they're both they're both like kind of too good. <laughs> it's like Ari Monogatri. Both characters are too good for each other. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sugary sweet, sugary sweet. Yeah, it's really cute. It's super and like the comedic situations are pretty funny. Um, yeah, like when they meet the parents. I think you got to that episode, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and his parents are like super nervous and shit. They're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, and then um, I, they go around like his hometown and see like the historical sites and stuff. And their relationship is really funny. Um, but it's also not one of those like dumb teaser romances. Like they actually, oh yeah, do, they like, kiss, they kiss and hold hands, and yeah, like it's actually, and they do act all like bashful about it. But like, they, it's you're not gonna be, it's not gonna do that dumb teaser shit where it's like, oh god, we're touching pinkies. Huh? <gasps> like they actually do relationship stuff, and it makes sense that they're bashful about it because like they technically barely don't they don't really know each other that much so it's yeah like, <laughs> it was like will you marry me that was like the second thing you said to her or something so yeah right and there's like you know i'm hoping that there's 
more of this show because I think there's like there's like twelve or thirteen volumes of it, and I don't think this. Show oh, it's a lot covered. of volumes. Yeah, yeah. Usually, so like, usually sh- episode it's like two episodes per volume or one per volume, give or take. Mm-hmm. It might be two per. I don't know. I, I haven't read this one, but so they might have enough for another season. Yeah, depending yep. on what they adapted. Um. Oh, there's fourteen volumes. And I think it's – I don't think it's going anymore. But, um, yeah, dude. Yeah, this one, like, this one had a really, really catchy OP as well. And the ED was, was pretty good as well. Oh, it is still going. It comes out on Weekly Shonen Sunday. Woo! Okay. Oh, the, the manga? Yeah, yep. Um, but, yeah, dude, really fun show. Really good romance. I think a lot of people would enjoy this. I thought it was really I think cute. it might be my favorite OP of the season. I have to watch a couple of them again, but – it's Aside from Jujutsu Kaisen, like it was really good. The song was it's, OP, not ED. Jujutsu Kaisen OP was good too, bitch. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's it's somcore, isn't it? It's just yelling yeah, bitch. guitar shit. Isn't no, it? it's not. It's like a catchy. Sh- right. It's shown in I'll be the judge. But... I'm listening right now. All right. Be a bitch. Whatever. Two times speed. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Two times speed. Sounds dramatic uh, as hell. The next one. Uh, I don't think we watched that one. Mahoka Coco no Retsasai. We didn't watch that, right? Uh, which one? Uh, no, this is another sequel, Mahoka. Oh, okay. This okay. I think the first one came out like five years ago, or maybe longer than that. This was a oh, irregular okay. Magic High School. Oh! Okay. I think it used to be on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. I haven't checked lately it for it. It might be. It might be. First season came out in so. 2014, so... Yeah, yeah, we ain't there yet. Uh, that one I he- I have heard very mixed reviews on. So I have, it's it's kind of like an overpowered character trope. Um, so yeah, if you like that, check it out. Um, the next one is uh, an anime original, Akudama Drive Studio Pierrot. You can watch this on Hulu. If you want to hear my opinion on it, you can listen to the Triple A podcast episode. But I'll say it here too. And my opinion of it is so it's about these these six. This ragtag group of villains or criminals, and uh, they get tasked by to do this heist off of this train that goes to um, a more prosperous, rich land, richer than where they come from, which is Kansai, uh, which is riddled with crime and uh, kind of the lower part of society as opposed to Kanto, which is the prosperous part that is in a higher plane. Um, and they're supposed to pull this high stop of a train on the way to Kanto, and each of them they don't they don't even have names. They're just they go by like what they do. So it's their job. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, kind of like doctor, fate, or like your caster, your archer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in that case, it makes more sense. But it's like yeah, it's like doctor, brawler, courier. But they don't have to fuck to get their mana back. No, no. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> which is which is downside. Let's be, let's be frank. That, that loses you know, the point mean, for me. Yeah, yeah that's it's kind of the best part of fate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you gotta you gotta read the doujins and visual novels for that you gotta read the, the doujins dude <laughs> oh so many fate fans just turned out best shit. girl all right uh but yeah so like it kind of the animation is really cool I, I really like the animation um there's some parts where it it goes down a little bit but then when a fight happens again it goes back up and obviously like the final scenes were really cool um the fights in the beginning were really cool obviously because they got to get you with the first couple episodes and especially the first one um very but flashy. there was yeah real flashy that's kind of my takeaway was that it was just mostly flash and just kind of dumb fun there was a lot of things where it was kind of like all some style that, yeah there was, it was all style no substance kind of thing and it was like there, there were some, some parts there were some parts that happened where i was like why didn't you fucking do that before you know like yeah. i was like what? it turned into this like trying to think of how to describe it it's like it, it's one of those shows it, it's a little bit like a salt lily diff, but different where you have like this big bad organization or a couple of like big evil villains and the group has to defeat them except this one had a little more like backstabbing i think because some of the some of the main characters turned out to be you know not who they seemed i guess without spoiling right right yeah <laughs> yeah you kind of yeah <laughs> that that's a little bit of a light spoiler maybe i shouldn't have said it like that but you know it's it's uh 
it, up up to up to all of them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, up to episode twelve. <laughs> yeah. The, the uh, it, it just I think it had like the ensemble cast problem where you had too many characters, and then it's hard to care about a lot of them because it's like they're just doing their job, you know. For me, I don't think it was too many characters, but it was they were all definitely super flat except for Swindler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the ending I I kind of liked the ending a little bit. Yeah, I thought that where, was cool. Like, where they did. the way that they defeated and and did the big reveal at the end and the what Swindler did at the end was really cool. Um so yeah, and then so we I don't remember the the very first few episodes. Where the there's there's like some there's like a brother and sister that show up partway through the show, right? Or did they, were they yeah, starting with the that's, group? That's so that's like the that's brother, part of like this big scheme that the the, evil the brother and doing. sister the twins or whatever let's call them yeah they're the thing they're supposed to heist off the train oh okay that's it okay because the yeah. train heist only lasts like four episodes give or take yeah so yeah the rest you of figure. it is is barreling toward the finish <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah it's just like an action show it's it's fine it looks yeah really it's okay good. I I think a lot of people enjoy it because it's it's pretty simple. There's a lot of people out there that enjoy it. It's kind of high up on here. Um, you know, it's right below the top, you know? So it's, I think a lot of people enjoy it because it is really flashy and it is really like, it has pretty good character designs, good animation kind of keeps you glued to the screen a little bit. Cause you kind of want to know what happens. Good character. Yeah. Good character design for sure. And I mean, and I should have said this on the, on the triple a podcast, but this is one of those things. And I say this all the time on this podcast, but like, I would have rather this been a movie and then had a better story written because like the characters, this is one of those shows where, I mean, most anime is like that, but I mean, this is definitely one of those ones where the characters are, are the driving force of the show more so than any other, sh- than other shows. And because they were so flat, it didn't really, that the out, the, the ending wasn't as satisfying because of it. Yeah. It's like action without, like I forgot how it was described, but it's like action doesn't really mean anything if you, if the characters are not that interesting. It, it doesn't really matter how good the choreography is. It's just like oh that was that was a thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, right. Um, like what's why is it this wasn't? Happening? I, I don't want. It wasn't like that bad. Like the characters were okay, but yeah, yeah. it was I just the characters were a little mid. Mid. They were mid. They were mid. Yeah. <laughs> But the animation would, and everything else is pretty good, so. Yeah, I would give it a watch, you know. I think it's pretty fun. It's on Yeah, Hulu. it's a solid show. Check it out. You can get through it pretty quick. I mean, it's it kind of flies, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, Akudama Drive. Um, this next one I finished today, actually, Majin no Tabi Tabi, or Wandering Witch Elena. It's 12 apps based on a light novel. And I don't remember how many volumes of the light novel there is. I think there's quite a bit. But, um. This is kind of like uh, an episodic. Oh, there's, 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 okay, there's three mangas and there's 17 volumes of the light novel. <laughs> Jesus, um, but yeah, I. This is kind of like this is, it's kind of like Kino's journey. It's basically Kino's journey, but um, with the witch, <laughs> with the witch, and like I said in the first impressions of fall of our fall um, episodes, it it really doesn't. There's really nothing special about the world or the fantasy parts of it, and that was kind of, a, a, was kind of fresh in my opinion because like they didn't try to do anything different. They just wanted to tell the story of Elena, and that's the main part of it. So like you know she's a witch. She goes to magic school. She can do magic. She's she extremely narcissistic. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty narcissistic. And they even really make fun funny. of her at the end. Like the very last episode is her meeting like fifteen of herself. Yeah, <laughs> she's like in love with herself and stuff. Yeah, yeah, which is really funny because one of them is like gelatinous, and they're just like, uh, yeah, this like, is they're this just is jello. slime, Elena. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is klutz, Elena. This is the smart Elena. You know, yeah. <laughs> this is the Elena that that has a boob complex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and her boobs get popped, and she's like, oh no, my boobs. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, like, and every episode is like a different thing a different entry in her journal or diary she's writing because she, when she was a kid, she read this book called the adventures of Nikkei and she was like a traveling witch. And that's why she's traveling. So she's writing in this diary and mainly she's just writing in it to like journal her, her, 
her, you know, stories and stuff for her parents. Um, since she's traveling away, since she's away from home most of the time. Um, but then, you know, obviously you realize that she wants to turn it into a book and stuff. Um, but there was a couple of episodes that were kind of like, they were really funny. There was a yeah, couple the one where they were just, the, uh, with her girlfriend. What's her name? Well, it's not her girlfriend, but I know, but the girl who's like, basically, Saya. Yeah, yeah. 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 She loves her. She's like in love with her. And they have yeah. like, they have like a freaky Friday thing. They get body swapped. So that episode was really funny because like they get body swapped. Right. So then Saya's like in her body, in Elena's body and they get, they inhale this, this, uh, this gas that makes them fall in love with the first person they see. So Elena was looking in a window when they got body swapped. So she falls in love with Elena, which she already was in love with. And it, well, it doesn't make you fall in love with the first person you see, but it makes you fall in love with someone that you were already in love with or a kind, even kind of just liked. So she was in love with Elena. She sees her in the window and she's like, they're trying to figure out what's going on. And she's like, Okay, well, since I was the one who opened the box that let out the gas, I should probably solve this. And then Saya goes, "Well, since I'm in your body and I'm technically you right now, I should solve it too." <laughs> she's like licking the window while she says it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, no, no. but um, yeah, there were some episodes like that that were really funny. There, the like the wine one, the two villages with the two wines was really funny. Then there were some that were just like, "Holy fuck, that is." Yeah, there's Sad. like a time travel one where they, she helps this witch travel back in time. The Lavender to, Witch, yeah. Estelle, yeah. We won't spoil what happens, but like, yeah, she's fighting something and uh, there's a reveal at the end. Yeah, and they don't make, and the, what I liked about that episode especially was the time traveling part wasn't like all complicated. It was just like, no, let's just go 10 years back. I have a spell for it. I can only do it once. We have the reading let's, Steiner. Yeah. Then there was, like, the one where she meets the one princess witch in the mansion. She's in the mansion all by herself, and she has to destroy this monster. And then the reveal at the end of that one is really fucking cool. And, man, dude, it was really cool. Like, there yeah, was, was a kind couple... of a mixture. Yeah, I did, and I said, man, I fucking said it. I was like, man, there's something about this show. I'm telling you, it's going to be it's gonna be fucking cool. And it was. It was really cool. And... The they, grape episode was really funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Step wine lovingly one. on my grapes. <laughs> That's what they were saying. Yeah, dude. Fucking. And then you realize that the one bitch wasn't even stepping on the grapes the whole time. It was really funny. But yeah, no, dude. Like, and then there's like, it, what's really cool about it is the recurring characters like Saya, her teacher Fran, and Sheila, and Saya's sister Mina, and they 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 sprinkle them in just enough where you kind of. They're, they're like the perfect amount. Like, you get attached to them just enough, but not enough to take away from the main point of the show, which is Elena traveling. You know what I mean? So I thought that was really cool. I think it's a really good show. I think y'all should watch it. And uh, I'm thinking there's going to be more because, obviously, there's 17 volumes of the light novel. and Yeah, they can just pick more stories, right? Yeah. She's only, like, and she's only 18 years old. You know what I mean? So, like, or she's 19? I don't remember. Something she's 18 like or 19. But, like, yeah, I mean, she... You know, of course, by the end of the show, this is not a spoiler. Like, it's not, it's just not, you know, she just is still traveling. So, you know, it's not like it ends like right away. So I, I like it. I'm excited to see more of that. And I thought it was really nice. Um, What about I you? Any final solid. thoughts on Did you like it? Yeah. Would you give, I, it, a, would you give it a well, five? Well, to, to be fair, I watched it at uh, two times speed. So, you know, that, that made the funny episodes funnier, but it made the, <laughs> the drama episodes also funnier. <laughs> so... Uh, I liked it. Yeah, I I probably didn't like it as much as you, but I I did think it was worth watching. This is like one of the better shows of the season. Um, even if it's not, it didn't like hit me a lot, but it it I can see that it's it's one of the more worthwhile shows to check out from the season. I would say. Yeah, I agree to that, and I just especially love Witchy. I think I gave it a so. five, but yeah, I don't know. I couldn't decide. Just I only give it a five because like I just to differentiate my scores. So mm-hmm. I'd be like, I liked this other show better, so I gave it a six, you know? Yeah. Um, I, but, I, I mean, personally... You, I could see a higher score on it, for sure. Yeah. It was a 7.59 on Mel. I personally love witchy stuff, so I kind of have a little bias towards it. But I also just really like the fact that it wasn't trying to do anything crazy or special. It was just, no. There's a fantasy world. There's witches. There's mages. There's knights. 
that's it. There's nothing yeah. crazy or spe- specific really about their watch. world. Yeah, really easy to watch. So yeah, uh, that's a good. I just yawned C2C. into the mic. That was great etiquette <laughs> by me. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Now we got Kamisama <laughs> Ninata He. The yeah, day I, I became a god. So this one is getting a dub. I watched the oh, first. Okay. I think I watched the first five episodes. It's also by uh, Jun Maeda worked on it, I believe. He worked on a lot of the key stuff like uh, Clan Ad and Air and all that stuff. Um, Angel Beats, Charlotte, and the Little Busters too. That one of your favorites. There you go. But this one is this one has like a six point nine three on Mal, which is interesting. Because I, I kind of liked it. I thought it was like, pretty fun. I, d- I didn't think it was like a lot worse than a lot of other shows. Maybe maybe people who have like seen a lot of similar shows are just giving it you know, more reasonable Like they're jaded score. or whatever, yeah. Yeah, like Charlotte had a 7.7. And that the ending on Charlotte was just like a shit show. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know how that one has a higher score. But um, I, haven't, I haven't finished. I got about halfway through this one. The, I, I really like the dub. Like I like... I like the the main girl uh, Hina, her voice actor is is awesome. It it just oh, yeah. it's like a perfect fit for it in the in the dub. The sub is is good too, but it, it's basically like you're, it's a show about there's a there's a character uh, Yuta Narakama spends his days preparing for university exams, and young girl Hina suddenly appears pro- 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 proclaiming herself the god of omniscience, and uh, she's confused and does not believe. Or Yuta is confused and does not believe Hino until she tells him the world will end in 30 days. So they go through the show and she, you know, demonstrates her God powers, you know, like on betting stuff, on uh, just like various things, like running a restaurant, various things. I haven't finished the whole show, but. And it's, you know, it's going to have like one of those key things, one of those Jun Maeda things where there's like a sad moment in there. And I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, no, I did. There's one, there's one part with a, a dad and a daughter. And there's, there's like, it, it's kind of like uh, the show from last season, I think. What was it? Uh, I'll find it. But it's kind of like one of those, and it's a, it's like that episode of Violet Evergarden too. Mm-hmm. With the, I really wanted to. I, the, there's I like a dead mother, forgot. a daughter, and a father. So yeah, it, 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 there's a whole story for that. It's actually very similar to all the other ones. <laughs> this uh, is like I, a Japan thing. But this one had something about it though, and I think it was the girl. The, the god or whatever yeah and then there was something like his parents were like oh we knew this day would come and it was like okay well fuck and now Kakushi Goto, that's it Kakushi Goto. um the her, the the main guy's parents was like oh shit we knew this would come dude whole oh, fuck and it was like that part alone made me kind of want to be like oh shit well now i gotta know what's up because obviously some crazy shit's gonna go down and i fucking straight up forgot about it so i really want to finish it because it's on hulu as well um but yeah so you didn't finish it? Or are you are you waiting for the I'm, job? I'm gonna finish it. I I really want to watch the dub. So okay, I might. I'll probably still just finish it before the uh, the summies, just so I can give it a fair shot. And if we rank it, if I rank it on my top ten or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I liked what I saw. I don't know if it would make. It'd have to have a really good ending to make the top ten. Hmm. All right, dude. Did Do you, my so the next the next uh, one's so the next uh, one. Higurashi. Higurashi, this actually has a 7.09 on Mal, so I'm guessing people were a little disappointed because the the first one came out like 10 years prior, uh, even actually earlier than that, like 15 years almost. And um, it's 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 just like a horror anime out in the countryside. This is mm-hmm. like a semi sequel, I think, kind of a little bit, but I have not gotten to it yet. So yeah, also, I think it's still on. going. So yeah, it's 24 episodes. Um, the next, next one, one is Talentless Nana. This is the re- fuck you read the manga show. <laughs> Studio Bridge. That's what I've There's, heard on it. I haven't finished it, but one of my old uh, co-hosts from my live cast show, Clock to Draw. Um, his name is Justin. He really likes this show. Um, I don't know if he's read the manga. I think he said he didn't read the manga before, but he's he. I I normally trust his taste in things. Um, he's a big fate fate guy and a big zero no Sukaima guy though so I mean I don't know I didn't really enjoy the beginning of it I kind of thought well this is just going to be like I kind of liked it I like the like the death like battle royale style shows that's mm-hmm. what this reminds me of I like the first few episodes but like after hearing that it, it doesn't really have an ending I'm like god damn it <laughs> I, just, I don't <laughs> want to finish ruined. it now 
just ruined. You it ruined has a it. solid score, seven point three eight. So okay. you know, Talent's if you like enough. it. Um, the next one was the Crunchyroll original Nobli- Noblis Noblis production IG. Yeah, we yeah, I think that. we all dropped this one. Yeah, just... this one was kind of poopy. I heard this is another one actually later on, after we had shat on it in the beginning, um, where I had heard read the web manga or read the manhwa of it because it's ten times better. Oh apparently yeah, the, they, it was an adaptation. Yeah, apparently they skip a lot of shit. And they do it out of order in the beginning or some shit. So, um, yeah. No, and then uh, next one is Kimi Toboku, something something. We we all dropped this one too. It's yeah, the Great War. It's like the Romeo um, and Juliet with the two warriors or some shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, then we have Hundred Man, or not Hundred Man. It's I killed a million. I have a million lives. I'm standing, standing on, on a, thousand, a million lives. A million lives. This yeah. one actually was okay at first. It had like kind of a quirky concept yeah 6.48 on mal i forgot I about this to one too it. but it looked really cool i have it on hold so i can't really it's add based on a it. manga and i guess the manga is still going so yeah not i think it's i don't know it's like weekly shonen champion probably but um next one dude is uh moriarty Here the patriot you this is pretty no good. moriarty production ig 11 apps based on a manga also and the manga go crazy i think as well this was fucking cool, man. God, I thought this was going to be lame, like Eat lame rich. historical BS that I don't care about. But nah, like this is a crime thriller to the bone, suspenseful. Comes out this on is Jump a, Square. Assassinating the aristocracy, <laughs> the anime. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, eat, eat the rich, the first the half anime. of it was. Yeah, the first second, half. I'd say the second third or so, he meets uh, Sherlock Holmes. And Watson and some of the other main characters. Do yeah, I'm they, actually not super familiar with Sherlock lore, but I know the name. <laughs> Great detective. There you go. Yeah, dude. Based on the the Doyle stories, you know, of uh, Sherlock Holmes. I feel like I feel like there's a Sherlock anime every season or almost every season. Really? Oh, I guess no. You're kind of right. <laughs> but like, was there was one a couple? Yeah, there was a Sherlock one a couple like seasons ago. I think I can't forget Vampire Holmes either. Vampire <laughs> Holmes. <laughs> oh man! But this one follows Moriarty. He's like the main bad guy in Sherlock, right? He's like kind of the the Joker to the Batman. William James Moriarty. Yeah, he's 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 like he's like the reverse Flash to the Flash. Um, I feel like he's actually the good guy though. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's just he's trying to eat the rich, man. He's trying to Yeah, you know. and he's one of those really villainy type of and in, in this in the manga and in this anime, they make you feel for what he is and what he's trying to do and you kind of are on his side to be honest. And Sherlock Holmes, you know, obviously he's a man of justice, a man of his word. He's just trying to use he's a detective. He's Well, they're to bo- stop they're him. both very cheeky in this in this anime. They're they're very like full of themselves because they're so talented. Like when, yeah. when they're on the when they're on the cruise ship, they run into each other and they're like, you know, they're having like a battle of wits like the first moment they meet. <laughs> so this yeah yeah the 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 interplay between them is is pretty good. Like especially near the end on the train, the train murder and uh, like like Moriarty is basically so Moriarty's basic plans are to he. He's going to try to change society with a series of murders and events to like put on a show for the public to to like open their eyes to the inequities of of like the their world. So he's going to try to and like he like it's it's really exemplified on the on the cruise ship one where they get like this rich this rich asshole and he he is like he ends up killing this other guy who the other guy turned out to also be like a murderer. So they're like, oh well, we killed a murderer. <laughs> yeah, it was like. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, like great justification. Anyway, they uh, <laughs> so like they they literally like put him on stage when they're doing a like a ballet, and he's like stabbing the the dead body like and, as the floor raises up, and so it's like that's the type of thing that Moriarty's trying to do is just like show people like that the rich are not above everyone else, right? And it and it, in the in the second and third episode when it's showing his past, um, it it explains everything. Like and it does it pretty yeah. well. Like and that's all the exposition you need. Here's the rest of the show, boom. And 
This is they this is the uh, parish emoji, the anime. <laughs> they don't waste time. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I fucking love it. Like it's super dope, and I think the art style is perfect for these characters. Um, yeah, it looks pretty solid. Is, it's uh, this is when they're obviously IG. younger. Yeah, production IG. They're all kind of pretty boys, and I hope there's more of it. I'm I'm sure there's going to be more of it because the. The manga's still going. It started in 2016. It's still going in Jump Square. If, yeah, magazine. it really feels like they could they could do another season for sure. They definitely could. They definitely could. I fucking love it. It's super great. It's maniacal. It's dark. There's blood. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's got like it's got like the mystery elements to it. They explain their their thought patterns and their reasoning. There's some psychological um, elements. Crime thriller. Really cool. I don't know dope. if it's like if if the mysteries themselves are as like super thought out as some other mystery shows like maybe Death Note, or uh, or the other ones. There's a bunch of other ones like like Perfect Insider actually did like one mystery for the whole show. It's like twelve episodes. Uh, uh, if this was like a no Sherlock shows. Holmes story, <laughs> you know it would be different. But yeah. this is a story of. Moriarty, the crime lord. You know, so it's like yeah, yeah, and there's like multiple things this is there's like a lot of revenge elements to this it's yeah. more revenge than than mystery i would say they're not like super focused on like logic puzzles so no yeah it's just kind of like two super geniuses battling each other mm-hmm. so yeah dude check it out moriarty the patriot um adachi toshima mura i want to i in lieu of other, this shows, is the uh, the Yuri it. show, right? Yeah, Tezuka Productions. Danny episodes. was watching this. She was, and I think this has a seven point two on Mal. So it's like reality. It's probably like a five. <laughs> it's probably just an average show if it gets that type of score. Yeah, I um, think she. I think she finished it. Um, but yeah, it's a Yuri romance or shoujo AI, whatever. That's Yuri. <clears throat> I watched it. It was like it was like kind of boring. I remember the first three episodes, so I think I. I have it on hold. I probably just end up dropping it. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna have time to finish, so I'm just gonna drop it right now. Um, okay. But I'm sure Danny enjoyed it. So I mean, yeah, if, if you like this type of show, like the romances, the slower shows, this actually had really good animation. I think when I watched it, or I, do I remember that correctly? I don't know. It's been a while. But yeah, I haven't gotten any farther, so I can't I can't add any more than check out our our opening episode for thoughts on that. Okay. And uh, when yeah. when Danny comes back again, she can give her two cents on these. Mm-hmm. We can do it on a straggler episode if she wants to yeah. run train on him real quick. Whatever episode she's on next. Uh, yeah. All episode. right, here we go. Doga Kobo. Already, when I see that, I word, watch this one. is the next you one. Go, you go ahead and Sleepy be a bitch, Princess. Huh? This is, I'm going to say it right now, anime of the season, right here. Oh, Sleepy get Princess. out of here. <laughs> yeah, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> I was like memeing the first time I said that, but now I'm serious. <laughs> it's actually really good. <laughs> This this is like fucking this is a great little comedy. It works well at two times speed, which is a bonus, by the way. And um <laughs> it's like this the whole point of the show is you have a princess who gets captured by the demon king and she just wants to have like a good night's sleep every time. So she goes on these quests for herself to like to you know, to get these crazy uh sleeping arrangements and, and every quest is really funny, like the, the way that the characters react to her is funny. The way that she, you know, she gets what she wants all the time because she's she's like so determined to sleep. It's it's hilarious. And I know Sam doesn't like it because you don't like you don't like uh, fun things, Sam. Nah, dude, it's boring, it's lame. I don't care. Fun things are fun. This Everything is, this is about is deadpan show. lollies to you. Nah, it sucks. Yeah, she is a deadpan lolly. What of it? <laughs> <laughs> what about it? She God. gets what she wants. She's a little bratty, oh, but also, uh, you know, very manipulative. I, I like, I like that. She, she, she is like simultaneously the prisoner, and also she's basically the king of like the demon c- castle because <laughs> like they all cater to her, to her every whim, basically. Right. Um, Doba so Koba like, is underrated, them. though. Yeah, I keep saying it every season. They, they have like my favorite animation. Like they're so good at animating. Yeah, they're basically they're really the good. they're basically like Kyoto Animation without like all the pigeon toes, and like Ghibli hair, <laughs> the Ghibli hair, where it's like floating all the time. Yeah, they did Dumbbell and uh, Doga Kobo. I think they did New Game. New right? Game, or was that somebody else? Himat, huh? 
Plastic Memories. Uh, yeah, they did Plastic Memories, Himachi no Marachan, Gekan New Game. Mizaki-kun, Himachi no Marachan. Yeah, they did a ton yeah. of good stuff. They did that uh, Yuri Yuri. yesterday one. Yesterday oh, yeah, one yesterday. Was yeah, that was kind of a meh show. But it was a mid. It was a mid. Mid. The ultimate, the ultimate insult. The ultimate insult. They're relatively uh, new. Like this, I think they started getting big this decade. I don't know if they officially started in the decade, but yeah. Like the the past, I would say five years, they've they put out some really good stuff, and the animation's always great. But yeah, Pr- Sleepy Princess, dude, it's fucking amazing. Every episode has, I would say, it has like a, a a handful of quests where she she tries to go to sleep, right? And it sounds boring, but like the way that they handle it and the way that she like does everything, it's different every time, and it, but it it ends the same every time, but the way they get there is different, and it's really funny. So mm. there you go. It's fucking hilarious. I got the manga for a Christmas gift. Um, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. It's dude. dude. It's it's so good, man. So funny. Best comedy of the year. Um, the next one we didn't watch. That was lame. Uh, the slime one with all the slimes or whatever. Oh yeah, we uh, dropped that one. I, I yeah. yeah, I didn't really love that one. That's the the salary man gets reincarnated or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yashihime, which is sequel to Inuyasha. Me and Danny did a first impressions on that, and as, as an AOQ, so you can go listen to that if you want. And we're probably gonna finish. It says only it only says twenty four eps on here, so I don't know if they're just trying to keep it at twenty four eps or they're gonna keep going with it. Like it's an anime original, so it's not based on anything. So it's not like based on a long running manga yeah. or anything. So it's probably just gonna be twenty four eps. So me and Danny will do like a follow up. Isn't sure. Inuyasha just all filler? Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 150 episodes. Fucking nothing happens. Shut up. All right, you don't know. Shots fired. You ain't never. I'm only you ain't never read da- it. I'm only saying that because Danny's not here. Okay. <laughs> Danny's not here to talk shit. Not Correct. Uh, I think we Golden Conway oh, third season. Yeah, I, gotta, I, I want to catch up to Golden Conway at some. point I got to catch up to it too because it's I, pretty sweet. I, I probably won't get there before the summies. So, um, Ikubukuro Westgate Park. I heard was another Doga Kobo. I was excited for this one, and then I heard it was lame, so I just never picked it up. I don't know. Maybe I should just give it a shot myself. Yeah, just try it. It's a, based on a novel. Uh, so, Kuma 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 Bear, light novel. Is As much as I l- loved Super Mid, what I watched of this, it is Super Mid. Yes. <laughs> Overpowered Isekai video game character. Okay. You have well, this not, character. Not, not Isekai, but video, video game. The, th- the uh, thing that bothered me was like the character, it it's basically a harem. You have a girl, but she's actually not a girl. It's like she every everything that every action she takes and the way she acts is like the way that a, a man would act. You know what I mean? Or you should say rather how a man a is normally written in anime. Uh, yeah, sorry. How yeah. a male character she acts the way a male character is written in anime, which is weird. Uh, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It just kind of feels weird. Why not just make her a male then? Why not make her a guy? <laughs> I don't know, but. Anyway, yeah, she's like she's just like really bored, and like she plays this VR MMO and like too too like, good at everything. Overpowered. She's literally too good at like life. Like she like trades stocks and just gets rich. She's like, oh, I just made another million dollars. Oh, okay, I'm I gonna mean, log back in my game. Fuck this. Like you, you know, what I mean? some Tesla right there, dude. <laughs> I was more interested in that part than like her being in the game with her overpowered bear suit. And you're probably saying to me like, Sam, it's Bear Wall Face Street Johnson. bets the anime. <laughs> Let's yeah, <that's> go. <laughs> So you're probably saying like Simon's Bearface Johnson's like whatever, right? I'm like, no, I fucking love it. I love every every bear thing about this show. I love. It just was super boring. They could they could have done so much more to make it more interesting, and make me keep watching it, and they just didn't. So, I mean, it's based on a light novel, and I'm sure this light novel is geared towards the popular thing right now, which is VRMMO light novels, Isekai light novels, that kind of thing. You know, most light novels are that right now. So, um. That's probably why a lot of people love the light novels. I personally just, it's whatever. I'm over it already. So, um, Sport Climbing Girls was. I kind of like this one. It's just a sports show. It's very run of the mill. But it's it's, there it's you go. very it's, it's too super, run of the mill. Yeah, it's very basic. I liked it. I could see myself watching and finishing this, but I don't know if I'll have time. So, I'm not yeah. gonna. I don't like it. Very, very basic. I thought it was going to be way cooler. It's it like every sports yeah. show. It's the same as High Q, but different. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, this is probably 
unless Nick has another one, this is probably the last. This one is the last I'm one I about. think. Yeah, yeah. Lily Assault Lily Bouquet, which is based on the Assault Lily franchise, which is like a multimedia franchise with um, uh, video games, uh, visual novels too, I think, and other light novels. Um, there is another. There's t- it's twelve episodes, and there's another like ONA by Studio Shaft coming out, which is this is Studio Shaft also. Uh, there's another ONA coming out later, I guess, um, to expand on the bouquet part of it. Um, there's a salt lily, just like different, you know, it's like different every time. A salt lily Alfheim, a salt lily this, you know. Anyway, this focuses on the character Riri joining the the academy for the counter huge arms, where they fight these monsters called huge, <laughs> and yeah, that's what they're called. They're called. Huge. They're huge. They're huge. They each have a unique weapon called charms, and so like they're. It's basically like, big swords. It's it's like God Eater, yeah. Like if you ever played God Eater, or girls seen God with Eater. giant weapons, uh, trope. But cute, cute, cute bunch of cute girls, different colored hair, big weapon trope, fighting big monsters. Yeah. Um. So like Sinful Gear, except Sinful Gear, they have armor too. But like, um. The thing Simple about Gear, this, they sing and they do like crazy shit. Yeah, Simple Gear is actually really badass. It's like, like way over, the, way yeah. over the top. It's over the t- yeah, it's super like way, it's yeah, it's fucking Subasa turning better. her one little sword into a huge fucking building sword. It's like the size of a building, and she cuts yeah. a mountain. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's badass. Um, but no, Assault Lily. Yeah, the thing that stuck out about it though was I like the, the character OP. designs and the art style made every girl have big thighs. Yeah, they had the thigh squish. They really got that. Got, they got that down pat. I and yeah, we were making fun. We were making jokes in our Discord, calling it "Assault Thighs" the anime. <laughs> like, yep. <laughs> um, but like the animation was super dope, though. And I do like, I do like the characters. Um, it has a lot of really tropey things about it. Like, there's the one girl who doesn't want to partner because. It's she's basically a, one big trope. The entire show is. Yeah, like, you've seen elements of this in other anime. Um. It's just, that's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you you have to really. I guess but if you one like one, this genre, then you'll like it. If you like the genre, you'll like it, and if you like the characters, you'll like it. I don't so. think there's almost anything super unique about the show, which is no. fine. It doesn't have to be unique. Actually, right. you, like it's you almost can't be unique at this point. There's so many things no, that come out, but you can yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't like do every. It it, it doesn't like excel. Uh, enough to like to to make it stand out. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, it looks pretty good, and it has a decent soundtrack. I, it's just like it's just solid overall. It's not a very good review, but <laughs> you know, um, well, it's not much to review when it's so like they, we've seen this before. You know, like many yeah, many times. And the, the mal score is reflective of that. It's like six point four six. So that's you know technically low. technically you could say a couple seasons ago when we when we had Grand Belm that was one like this except yeah, they, yeah, they were, they were max one, same thing. It's like Monica Magica. Uh, well, it's, it's it's a lesser Monica Magica, really. Yeah. That's kind of, right. like, close to the pinnacle of what you would get for this, mm-hmm. like, girls fighting uh, otherworldly monsters. Huge. 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 But, uh, and, and I would say the problem with Assault Lily is the characters look too similar, even with the hair colors, because they all have the exact same uniforms, or very close to the same uniform. Um, So, like, if... It's 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 like if you put their silhouettes next to each other, you couldn't tell who's who. Mm-hmm. Whereas like something like Konosuba, they have different color palettes, they're differently shaped, you know. You can yeah. see the characters. The, the designs are more distinct. Like they're not distinct just, enough in this. If I said red, um, green, blue, yellow, you could say each character in that order. Like, you know what I mean? Cuz like their their color palettes are like yeah. Which is a yeah. Which is an excellent trait about that show in particular. But yeah, like yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I would say like as as far as like this this genre of show, this is like C tier. If like if Madoka is like S tier and Yuki Yuna is like B tier, maybe then you know this is like a C tier. Yeah, give or take. Um, yeah, it's fine. I do like the one character's name is Milliam Hildegard Van Gorpius. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another. Character named Time Time I Yoshimura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and course, they, they do the they do the helpful thing where they put the the names over the characters, like every other scene. So you're like, oh, yeah. that's who the character is, which I kind of like actually. 
There's a couple of Chinese characters too. Like there's uh, Kuo Shenlin and Yu Jia Wang. And then there's the rest of them are Japanese. But yeah, then there's just the one like European chick, Milliam Hildegard. <laughs> like, you gotta have the one European chick, all right? She's the token European chick. Um, but yeah, very, very mid, very mid. I just yeah. like, I I do like the the way everything is designed and I, I like how flashy it is, but. Yeah, it, I think it fo- it focuses more on like the girls and like their feelings because there's the one yeah. girl who like lost her partner. She's a loner, and, very tropey, yeah. She's yeah. a loner, and then uh, I think Yuri Yuri's charm is like being a leader and having charisma, <laughs> pretty much, or Riri, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, I, I call it the wrong name, but anyway, they, they look the same. What can't blame me? But it's it's uh it's it it focuses less on like the mon- like the monsters. I would say. Which I wish it focused more on, like on like the world building. If it didn't feel like there was enough world building, mm-hmm. that's yeah, that's definitely that's definitely true. Like even Galleon has a similar premise. It's almost it's actually pretty very similar, kind of. I mean, they're defending the world from you know these these crazy supernatural things, but the world building in even Galleon is is like top tier. So it's like, oh, this is fucking awesome. I want to see more of this. This one is just kind of a, a little bit flat. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely more flat than than others. In conclusion, sure. yeah. <laughs> In conclusion, watch it for the thighs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to Sakugaboru and look at the thighs. So, what what is your anime of the season? I already told you, Sleepy Princess, and it's Dumb. actually not close. It is actually Dumb. not close. Dumb. You're a butt face. Mine is uh, probably Elena or Tony. Well, yeah, I'll say Elena. I really liked Elena. Oh, Tony Kaku Kawai. That, that's a good one, too. Yeah, Elena's good. I can see a lot of people picking that. Also, I will say I re- I, what I enjoyed this season, there's a lot of fucking gay shit happening. A lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of lesbian shit happening, and I'm, I'm all about that. I'm yeah, the uh, assault, that. assault Lily was very Yuri bait as well. Assault Lily, and then Elena. There was She was in love with the, the one girl was in love with Elena. And then there was uh, uh, Adachi Toshimamura, obviously, and then... Just super gay. It's gay. Whatever, dude. That's gay. You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing we didn't mention was Gochi Usa season two or three. I need to catch up to that too. Mm-hmm. Is the order a rabbit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. But yeah, dude. So anyway, let us know what y'all been watching. And what y'all watched? We're Ooh, what, excited. Are, what are our favorite ops and eds? Okay, my favorite op is. And you can't pick the same show. Well, yeah, you can. You can do whatever you want. I picked my Dumbbell favorite. One season my favorite everything. ed is Jujutsu Kaisen. My favorite op is probably Tony Kaku Kawaii. Yeah, I, I think I got the same thing. I, I would also add in Sleepy Princess. God, whatever. For the op and ed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you Dark know Horse, what op? Um, the the girl Assault Lily actually has a pretty good op. Oh, yeah, that was a good one, too, actually. That's actually a really good one, really catchy. You know what OP I hated? Okay, well, I didn't hate it. I hated the song. Not the visuals, but the song. The visuals were really cool, but the song was terrible. Akudama Drive. Oh, yeah. The song was so lame. It's like, it was so typical. Like, they could have done something cool with that. Kind of sounds like Jujutsu Kaisen's OP. Fuck you, (laughs) bitch. Fuck you. You're a bitch. All right, fuck you, then. Let us know what y'all's watching. And then let us know what y'all finished. And uh, we're just send us out with the Tony Kaku Kawaii OP. Do it. Oh, the OP? Or the ED of uh, Sleepy Princess. Nah, we're not. I'll do Tony Kaku Kawaii. (laughs) Good, good. I tricked you. (laughs) Sleepy Princess sucks. Nah, don't bait me. Jabated. Jabated, dude. (laughs) Jabated. Wrecked. Oh, man. All right. Let us know what y'all are watching, and we're excited to get into fucking winter season finally. And uh, we will see you uh, then when we do our winter first impressions. Until then, I've been Sam, that's Nick, and this has been the Anime Summit Podcast. See ya. <laughs> she says her own name when she falls asleep. <laughs>